y'all. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a thrift haul. I also have some pieces that my mother purchased at an estate sale for me that she gave me and a couple of other family heirlooms that she has given me. And I'm going to share those with you as well. And we're also going to be doing some thrift flips on some of the items I will be sharing in today's video. So I hope you're excited. So let's get started. Okay. These are items that were purchased not all in the same day or week or anything, but I kind of have got them collected and I'm going to share with you what I have purchased and my ideas for the ones that we're going to be flipping and yeah, that's it. <laughs> so I'll get the smaller ones out of the way first, but I purchased this cute little picture frame and if you can see, I've already got a photo of myself and James in it. I just thought it was so cute. It's kind of like a brass. Um, it was still in the box, in the package. It had never been opened. It's heavy, and I love that it's round. I know I'm, like, loving the round and ovals. Um, I purchased this for $2.99. Well, actually, my mother purchased this for me for $2.99, um, and I just kind of have it sitting on the table by the recliner, and I really love it because it's just kind of one of those pieces. It's small. You can just kind of stick it anywhere, so got that. My next purchase is this. I love it. Um, this is actually, I've looked it up online and this is from Mud Pie. This is a paper towel holder. Um, and the only price I can find of what it was worth is on eBay and they're selling it for $21. I don't know how much it originally cost, but I only paid $2.99 for it. And I love it. I think it is so cute and perfect, but I'm not going to be using it as a paper towel holder, and I'll tell you why. Although I love it as a paper towel holder, my husband, who never really says anything about what I decorate or how I decorate in this house, does not like this as a paper towel holder. So, I was like, okay. He likes our other one that we have. He lives here too. So, I was like, that's fine. So, I'm going to just be removing this, and I'm going to use it as a bowl. And I think it's going to be cute. You could, um, I'll show you how my plans behind this, but I forgot to mention the day that I purchased this, I ran into a, y'all know I don't like calling y'all subscribers, but a friend of mine who watches my channel, uh, I was walking down the linen section and she said, I know you, you're on YouTube. I said, yeah. I said, you watch my channel? She said, I do. And we stood there and had the best conversation. It was so nice to meet you, Hope. I really enjoyed chatting with you, and I hope I run into you again. She's another Mississippi girl down here on the Gulf Coast. So, that was always, I didn't even get a picture. We was talking so much, I didn't even think to grab a picture of her. But, thank you for stopping me, Hope. I loved chatting with you. Okay, on that particular day, I had this in my cart, my buggy, and she saw it. She's like, I really love that. I was like, me too. But, I also had something else in my buggy, and... I don't think she was too impressed with them, and I'm not impressed with them in the current state, but I know what they're going to look like when I get finished with them, so let me show you. I purchased these. <laughs> now, this one is very similar to the one that my daughter in love gave me that was broken. There was a piece that was broken on the front, and I think this is what it was. The little bitty was missing and I redid it and I have it styled on top of my armoire but I paid $9.99 each for these um, and they are like a ceramic piece and um, because hers that she gave me was painted completely different than these um, but I'm going to do a paint technique on them and they are going to be the star of the dining table and I cannot wait to show y'all my plans for that but this is this one. Absolutely love it. And then this one had no breaks or chips or anything. But this one did, which I don't care because once I do my technique, you're not going to notice any of that. So, I paid $9.99 for him, too. I'm so excited about them, y'all. I never find chickens in my thrift store. So, when I seen them, I snatched them up because... I know what they can look like and although they're not bad now I mean I don't really care for the pink here um, 
they're just not what I want, I'm going to make them what I want. And I think that's going to be a fun, fun flip. So, got those. Then, on a different day at a different store, went to the Goodwill. And I am still planning to do my guest room makeover, which now I'm finding out that may be delayed because my daughter may have to stay with us for a little while, but that's okay. Anyway, I grabbed these. Y'all, these are perfect. There is absolutely nothing wrong with them. I can use them as they are. They're handmade and matted and framed. They're just perfect. I paid $4.99 each for them. This is the back. But this is this one. And then this one. And I just know exactly where they're going to go. I just know it's going to look good. And it's going to be perfect for that room. And I just... $4.99 each. And they're handmade and vintage. And just perfection in my, in my opinion, of course. On that same day at Goodwill... I picked this up. Y'all, I love this. This is the bottom of it. I can just see this setting on the corner of the bed with, you know, a candle, a book, something. I don't know. I just love it. It looks very old to me. I don't know if it is. I think it might be, but I paid $3.99 for this. And it is just, it's perfect. I love it just like it is. I'm not gonna do anything to it. It's just perfect. Okay, so those are all the items that I thrifted. So now I'm going to show you the items that my mother gave me that were family heirlooms and then things that she purchased at an estate sale. So I'll start with the estate sale items first. The first item is this, this old rusty knife. I know you're probably thinking, what? I think she paid a quarter for it. I love it. Um, I asked James, I was like, do you want it? And he was like, I might, because I just think that this can be cleaned up and sharpened up and we can use it. And I just love it. I love it. If he doesn't use it, if it does not sharpen up to where he can use it, I would definitely be using it and displaying it somewhere in my decor. Then she picked me up this old potato masher. I think she paid a quarter for it. And I love it. The old wood handle. Love it. So I'll be figuring out what I'm going to do with this. I'll just stick it somewhere, probably up on top of my cabinets. But I love it. Okay, that's all that she purchased for me. She also brought me this, and you're probably thinking, okay, Donna, why? I know, but y'all, we're going to be flipping this too. This was actually thrifted uh, for $1.99, but I can just see this painted and distressed and holding a cute little bit of floral or something, some greenery. I just, I don't know. I just think it's gonna, it's cute and I can just see it being uh, flipped. So, got that. Okay, the next two items she gave me, they are family heirlooms and they were given to her by my granny's sister and now my mom is passing them down to me because she knows how much I'm loving this kind of stuff and how I'm using it in my decor. And so she was like, you can take it, you can have it because you will love it and appreciate it. So the first item is this, this sifter. She's even wrote a note on it. And I'm not probably not gonna keep the note on it, but I am gonna pull it off and put it in one of my cookbooks. But it was, it says from Aunt Ina, Ina to my mom. It's over 60 years old. And she gave this to my mother on April the 7th of 2006. And my Aunt Ina has since passed. But just look at that. I mean, it's just perfect. It's perfect as is. I would never, ever, ever do anything to this, but this is a little note she's put on it. Okay, the next item just proves that my family enables my addiction with, well, my mom enables my addiction of thrifting. 
And she's also enabling my addiction of rolling pins. <laughs> I know, right? So this is my Aunt Einer's old rolling pin with the wood handles. My mom has even like put a note on it and it says, this was given to my mother from my aunt. Um, it was given to her in April of 2000 and then it was over 60 years old. So now it's over 70 years old because now we're in 2022. So I love it. Love it so much, y'all. Love it so much. Look at that. Just look. And this is part of my family's, you know, history. So I'll definitely be displaying this. Um, I just love everything about it. It's just perfection, just perfection. Okay, so now that I have shown you all of my goodies, now we're going to start doing some thrift flipping. So let's get started with that. Okay, for the first thrift flip, very simple, y'all, very simple. So basically, I'm just going to unscrew this just like that. And now we have a bowl. And this can be used to hold greenery. I actually have a bunch of eggs that my husband's friend from work has been bringing us eggs from his chickens. That is too too many for my little bowl. I could even put my eggs in here. Just, I mean, the options are endless, y'all. And look, and I can even use this to like stick in somewhere as just a piece of decor because it looks rustic and old. So let's go style this. Technically, what I'm fixing to be doing is not a thrift flip, but it will be used with one of my thrifted items. I think, if not, it will be used somewhere else, but I'm going to be making a riser. This is some of that leftover top from when I did my little cabinet flip. I have four of these little legs I got from Hobby Lobby. They were $2.49 each. I don't know if they go 50% off or not. I have four of those and my glue gun, so I'm going to glue my little legs onto my board and make a riser. We'll be doing a paint technique on it and everything. So let me get the legs glued on. Now we have a cute little riser. I love it. So now I'm gonna take it out back and spray paint it black and then we'll do some distressing add some uh, dark wax to it and have us a cute little riser if you did not want to do it black you could stain this you could paint it any color you wanted i'm just going to do the black with the wax on it because it goes with my decor so that's what i'll be doing so self-explanatory i know but i took it out back i give it a good spray paint of black and I just did the bottom first, flipped it over to the top. And then once all this dries, I'm going to take it into the garage. And I'm going to use just some sandpaper to distress it. Now, this is personal preference. Uh, I did pull out my orbital sander because I just wanted more than what just doing it by hand was giving me. But you can distress this as little or as much as you want to. Um, you don't have to distress it at all if you don't want to. You can just keep it the way it was. But I like to distress it. And then once I get it to my desired look, then I'm gonna take it in and I'm gonna add my dark wax to it. And it turns out just like I wanted it. I did ask a lot, what is the wax I use? This is the Bayer Wax and I use it in Dark Antique. I actually got this from Home Depot. But I will tell you that uh, Kiehl's makes a good dark wax. Um, that's what I used before I had this, and it was really good as well. And I think Walmart probably sells the Kiehl's. But as you can see, the dark wax just adds a richness. And I feel like it just needed that, and I just love the way it looks. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> This 
is that little ceramic piece and I'm just going to give it a good coat of the black spray paint as well. I did end up having to give it like two good coats and then we're going to do a little paint technique on it and I'm going to use my Vaseline and it's, it just has these little raised flowers on it and I'm just going to use my Vaseline to kind of go over those so when I paint it, it will kind of distress and just give it a more, I don't know what you would call it, antique look? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going over it with this Waverly uh, chalk paint in ivory, and I do go over it twice. I guess it's like one really good coat, and then I just kind of hit it um, with a second coat in the areas that it needed it. Let that dry, and then I'm going to um, go over it with this antique wax. I just kind of put it on there, wax on, wax off. All my 80s Karate Kid fans out there, with the antique wax and I just love the way this just kind of ages it and where I put the Vaseline it's going to start pulling off some of that paint it's not going to stick to it and it's going to show the black from underneath and I just love the way this looks to me it just adds a richness to it as well I guess that's the word of the day but there you go that's what it looks like and I just think it is so cute and so rustic and I just use it as a little planner Okay, y'all, this is the Crawlon Fusion in matte gray. And I'm, look, y'all, I am multitasking. I'm eating a popsicle and I'm spray painting. <laughs> look at that wind blowing. Anyway, I'm going to give both of the chickens a good full coat in the gray. And I'm going to kind of let that dry. And then you're going to see me take some black, some of the black. And I'm just going to kind of splatter it a little bit. And in the places that I get too heavy, I just go back over it with the gray. And honestly, y'all, you could just skip this step. It did not make a difference at all. But I just thought I would try it. But anyway, I'm going to let that dry. Here I am doing the hen. Giving her a full coat. I do the black paint technique on her. You know, the splatter in it as well. But like I said, it does not make a difference. I would totally skip that step and I won't do it again. But going to get her fully coated and then we're going to move on to the distressing now i'm going to go over him with vaseline and what i get questions like what is the vaseline for what is the purpose of the vaseline the vaseline where i put the vaseline the paint that i'm going to go over him will not stick and it will make it much easier when i start distressing it it'll just wipe off and you'll see this underneath come through so that is the purpose of the Vaseline. And I just take a paper towel and I just wipe it randomly where I want, y'all hear Buster drinking his water, where I want the, um, the paint to distress. So that is what I'm going to do next with the Vaseline. And I'm only gonna show you what I'm doing, how I do the rooster. I'm not gonna necessarily show y'all the hen and the bee because it's gonna be the exact same technique and I don't want it to become redundant. So, I'm just gonna show you on just the rooster. So I have my paper towels right here, my Vaseline, and I'm just gonna get a little bit and just wherever you put that Vaseline is where that paint is going to distress. And I tend to kind of just, I don't have a rhyme or reason. I just, wherever I wanna put it, that's where I put it because it's gonna have so many layers on it when we do all of our paint, because we've spray painted it, we're gonna do our chalk paint, and then we're also gonna do our antique wax and our dark wax. So it's gonna have multi layers on it, but when it's done, it's going to look so rich. And that's all I'm doing. So next I'm going in with my Waverly Ivory chalk paint. And I have found that it is much better if I stipple the paint versus just wiping it on. So I'm just gonna go in here and just kind of stipple the paint all over. And you, I wanna get a pretty much of a full coverage but if I miss a spot, like I said, there's gonna be so many layers, it's really not gonna matter. But I'm just gonna go in here and I'm going to stipple the paint all over him. So 
So for this part, I recommend you put on a good YouTube channel that you enjoy watching and have fun. So let me get him painted with all of this. And when I get through with this, I'll come back and show you what he looks like and we'll move on to the next step. And now I'm going to let that dry before we move on to the antique wax. chicken with just the antique wax and wiping it, you know, putting it on and wiping it off. But here's what I want to show you. You see this right here, like where the gray is coming through? That's where we put the Vaseline and that just wiped off as I was distressing it. But I see, hold on, right here. Okay. So, you could leave it just like this and do nothing else to it. But I just want y'all to see the head close up. See, everywhere that that gray is coming through, that's where we put the Vaseline. We could leave it just like this. This is how it looks after the wax. This is what it looks like before the wax. So quite a bit of difference. Big difference. So now what I'm going to do, this is not all. <laughs> um, now I'm going to go back over it with the dark wax, the dark antique wax from Bayer. And this is going to deepen up and darken up and just make it richer than what it already is. And then once I do all of that, then I'm going to seal it with a a sealer and call it good. So let's do that. So I have this brush and we're gonna also wipe, we're gonna put it on, we're gonna wipe it off just like we did the antique wax, but it's just gonna add another layer to it. So. See how it just adds some richness to it? because it's what I had but I really would like to get a clear matte um, sealer but I'm using this because I had it and then I'm going to show you what they look like thank you so much for watching this video I hope it inspires you and I hope you got some ideas and y'all just don't look at that table right now it's going to be coming up next and it's going to get some good weather again thank you so much I love you and I'll see you in the next video bye y'all